All right. Hello and good day, everyone. We are about to start in a few minutes. So before everything, we would like to go over some house rules. Please observe proper decorum at all time as this session is live to show your support. If you have any question for the team, drop a comment down below for feedback. And if you like what you're seeing here today, feel free to like the video, share this event with your friends, network and families, and don't be shy in showing your support. And the most essential rule is to enjoy, have fun. And without further delay, let us begin. All right. Hi, my name here is Marvin Jett, and I will be your host for the day. This is such a lovely evening today to be inspired, don't you think? It's also a great day today to learn and hear our advices from our speaker. Uh, again, we are glad that we have this platform to showcase the experts here in our community. Now, this program is powered by Quantrix Women of Q. It was ideated and was organized by amazing volunteers who were with the same goal of empowering our ladies and technology and IT groups. Now, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Women in Tech. All right. All right, now at the start of this event, uh, this will not have been possible if it was not for her. You know, she was the brains behind the Women in Tech initiative and it's the vision and goals. Now, with the background of being an active volunteer of various tech communities such as DevCon Philippines, women who code Manila, Google Developers Group Manila, she initiated this program for our organization. May I call on Women in Tech lead, Jedi Luxai, take the stage, please. Uh, thank you so much for that, Jet. So, hello everyone. We are glad to see you all here with us today. So, just to give you a background of what Women Tech is, so we, as members of the IT community in Contrix and as volunteers of Women of Q, we're dead set to create a program to empower our very own Contrix women in technology. So, our goal was to give um, the stage to our Quantrix talents to share their experiences, do knowledge transfers, and this program has been a platform for community members to learn about tech, connect with our homegrown tech experts, and learn about opportunities in our growing technology departments. So in our first session um, on September 3, we had the theme of starting in tech, which where we featured Miss Jelly Armada from the Department of Professors who shared her color full experience from coming from a non-tech department in an industry, then joining a tech team and how it has impacted her career through her talk, Switching Careers with Passion. The second event entitled, Things I Knew, I Wish I Knew Before Leading a Team. So we had the theme of women leading in tech in which we featured a community member who has led a tech team. Actually, um, it was myself where I shared qu my Quantrix journey and experience and what it's like leading for the first time a team of amazing programmers to now leading three teams, including the remarkable teams of Department of Testers and Business Intelligence. Then the third session, which happened last um, September 17, we had a really informative technical session entitled Introduction to Mobile Development um, by Ms. Leilani Montas, a team leader of the mobile app developers, who shared the one-on-ones on how to build a mobile app from scratch. So incredible, right? And not just that, we have also gathered together remarkable ladies from department for, or sorry, from different IT groups here in Quantrix, and this is um, them sharing about how and what it's like being an empowered woman in tech in this video. So let's watch this together. Hello, I am Monica Rojas. I'm from the Department of Testers and I've been with Quantrix for almost three years now. Hi, my name is Paula Jane. I am a Blueprint Designer from the BC Support Department and I have been in Quantrix for more than two years now. Hi, I am Julia. I am part of Core Programmers. I've been with Quantrix since May 2020. Basically, my main role is to test different applications and websites from our clients' company. I am a Blueprint Designer. We design and document new process for Blueprint as per business guidelines. We analyze, manage, and implement new and existing processes. This is to provide a positive impact to business metrics and, of course, improve our customer engagement experience. Currently, 
I'm a programmer who's focused on developing in-house solutions for Quantix. Every day we are doing regression testing of all these applications to make sure that everything is working fine and is expected. We are also working side by side with different project owners to make sure that the quality of the new feature that we're going to be implementing is perfect. There are also times that something will not work on how we expect it to be, but all we have to do is be strong and face it head on, but of course with the correct process. As a designer, we collaborate with the team about their project. We also analyze documents based on business objectives to properly plan the structure and design process for blueprints. We also present our designs to operations team and design briefs, just in case there's any changes, we can update it. As a programmer, my day-to-day -day looks like this. Developing application and features on our internet system using .NET, Azure Components, c -sharp, MVC framework where the context community utilize as their go-to daily tools. We also collaborate with team members, stakeholders, and project management team to contribute towards the automation and streamlining of processes for the benefit and effectivity of our organization. When I first heard about this thing, it totally got my interest right away and it becomes something I enjoy doing. I have always been fascinated with technology ever since I was in high school. Computer subjects are actually my favorite. I remember the excitement when I finished my first ever web design project. It was really fulfilling. That's why I took information technology in college. Earlier in high school and college days, I decided to create games that has story plotline, similar to some popular mobile games, which is why I pursued for an IT education. I was born in a year where everything is fast based on technical work. So as a woman, I believe that my greatest strength is that I always been very detailed oriented in my work. My attention to details has been the most important skill I contribute in testing applications and websites. And it also becomes a significant part of our quality process as well. Yes, we are women, but in the end, all we gotta do is have faith and confidence to our result, right? As a woman, I think being detail-oriented is one of the strengths that I have. I'm always curious, so I always ask a lot of questions that could either help me grow or help us identify solution and really understand the issue. As a woman, the strength that I contribute to my team is time management and organizational skills, like handling multiple projects at the same time, tracking and organizing prioritized or urgent tasks, documentation, and keeping track of the progress of our projects. Since I started my career, I got to know more knowledge when it comes to technical stuff. And that knowledge is getting more and more deeper, not just on the front end, back end, but I'm also learning some other unexpected technical process. I'm actually just new in this industry. I think it is always improving and always changing. I don't think I can measure how much it changed, but what I can say is it improved in a short period from the time I started, how much more in a few years. But I can say that it's always moving forward, innovating and providing good and positive change. We know the tech industry is ever so changing. There are even more new roles in the tech industry now. This is mainly due to the companies or people who prioritize the increase of work efficiency and incorporating automation in their businesses. There are challenges when it comes to providing your point because you're a woman, so some might have doubts with you. But all we just need to do is to be brave enough and never doubt ourselves and then prove them wrong. Yes, uh, there's a lot, or I don't know if it's just me, but being a woman in tech is a lot of pressure. I feel like I don't belong and I am still intimidated by smart people and don't get me wrong, I admire them a lot. It's always a challenge to be able to talk confidently to everyone, especially in our meetings and collaborations. I would be very quiet and, and there's a lot going on in my head like, is this a smart question? Should I speak? Have my ideas make sense? 
Um, but all you gotta do is to start to train your mind to be comfortable. Sounds easy, I know, but you just have to learn from them. Listen and read a lot, especially for yourself, it's fine. It works most of the time, for me. Um, it's always a process, never be hard on yourself. In my experience, yes, being a programmer, you are surrounded by so many smart and talented colleagues that you may feel or you are likely to go through imposter syndrome. That I do sometimes feel the responsibility to participate more actively, to convince myself and to others that I am talented and creative. I overcome this challenge by the help of our team leaders. They will motivate, praise, and advise sincerely to cope with tasks, guide you on the correct path, and to boost your confidence. If you're considering a career in tech, my advice would be not just go with the flow. If you think something is off and not right, you just have to voice it up. If you have any ideas or plans for your team to be much better, share it with them and then never tell it yourself. You're not just a woman. You're going to be a great woman from tech industry. I can say that never be afraid to fail and try. It's a long list of opportunities in technology. You can visit forever. Tech industry is not just codes. You can excel in something else. You can try network admin, web designing, um, project management, process and business analysis, UI and mobile designing, and a lot more. The best way is to try. And if it doesn't work out, try a different thing until you find what suits you and what you're good at. Stay committed and be consistent in learning and be open to new ideas. No one starts with perfection. Just keep going, keep doing, showing up and perfecting your work. Just be yourself, don't be afraid, and rely on knowledge and experience you have. And most important, ask for help when you need it. I'm Quantrix, and we are the Women in Tech. amazing ladies and an amazing video am i correct so um and today for the finale of our event we are proud to feature the pioneer ladies in it here in Quantrix to tell us about how they started out and how they have grown in Quantrix. so we really appreciate your support um and please don't forget to like follow and subscribe to our Quantrix facebook and youtube page and would love to see your support through our comment section Hope you all have fun and learn from this discussion. Again, welcome everyone to Women in Tech. Back to you, Jet. Okay, thank you, Jetty. And yes, with the success of the previous Women in Tech session, today as it is the finale, we are all excited as we know that this will be as much as informative and inspiring. Now, before we move on to our main event, you know, let's loosen ourselves up and, you know, just chill for a moment because we're going to play a little game or an icebreaker. And to explain how this works, we're just going to go ahead and ask a simple question with four options. And once the timer starts, or once the timer starts, put your comment down below in YouTube or in Facebook. Okay? And again, rest assured, you guys, the first one to put in the correct answer, good news awaits for you in the end because we have designated members in our team that will, of course, monitor them. Okay? So let's go ahead and uh, play a little game, shall we? Okay, let's go ahead and go for our first question. What would this be? Okay, let me just go ahead and read the question here. What animal is in a Firefox logo? So let me re go ahead and read the options here. All right, so we have a fox, a wolf, a red panda, and a squirrel. Timer starts now. Thank you. All right, so it's a browser which I believe everyone is already familiar with, right? So I wonder what it is, all right? So we have 13 seconds left. Put your comments down below, guys. Like and share. All right, uh, eight, okay, timer is almost done. Four, three, two, and a one. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what the answer is, shall we? Oh, red panda. All right, so uh, guys, if you feel a little bit bamboozled, I actually, you're not alone because I also answered fox, but who, who would have guessed, right? Red panda. Okay, so again, uh, congratulations to the winners. And again, we will announce you uh, the one who won this round in a later part of our segment. So just keep on watching. 
and keep on liking the video, okay? Let's go ahead and move on to our next question here. Okay, let's just go ahead and, you know, read the question. There are approximately blank Google searches per day, and the options are? So, we have at least like 50 million, 5.6 billion. All right, timer starts now. Also, we have 5.2 million and 30 billion. That's nice. So, how many do you guys uh, check? How many searches are there in a day, right? And time is almost up. Three, two, and a one. So, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what the correct answer is, shall we? All right, 5.6 billion. Now, that's a lot in a day, which raises a lot of questions like, what are they looking up for? But that's a question to be entertained on another time. Let's go ahead and, you know, go on to the next question. All right, so what OS computer abbreviation usually means? Let's go ahead and read down the options. We have order of significance, open software, operating system, and optimal optical sensor. Okay, that's interesting. All right, so we have 14, 12. All right, we have 10 seconds left here. Okay. Here we go. Five, four, three, and a one. one. Time is up. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what the answer is. All right. The answer is operating system. Uh, yeah. Again, congratulations there to the winner. Again, your name will be announced. So again, always stay tuned. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on there to the next question, shall we? All right, so in computer terminology, how many megabytes are there in a gigabyte? So let's go ahead and read or run down through the options here that with what we have. So I believe we have like 1026, 1050, 1020, and a full plat a uh, 1000. So timer had already begun, so let's go ahead and, you know, uh, wait for it. So just again, comment down, be the first one to uh, put in the right, right answers there. All right. Okay, we have five seconds left. Four, three, and two, and a one. And yeah, time is up. So again, uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see, you know, what the correct answer is. All right, so it is indeed a thousand. So if you were in high school or probably you encountered this uh, many times before. And yeah, uh, thank you everyone uh, for, you know, participating in our little icebreaker. And I hope everyone had fun. And again, to those lucky winners, rest assured, good news await for everyone in the end. So just stay in tune, okay? Now that we got you hyped up and engaged, now we're going to go ahead and follow to our next segment. But before we do, again, uh, feel free to like the video, comment down, and share this with your friends or families. Don't be shy, okay? All right. So uh, again, uh, we're going to go ahead and proceed to our panel discussion here. And I'm just going to go and run around to our speakers here for today. So first off, we have Ms. Cheryl Stababa, our Senior IT System Implementation Specialist. Next, we have Ms. Jackie Bellingit, our Senior Tester, uh, Department of Testers. And last but right. not least, Good day, we everyone. Have Welcome Rachel to our panel Chico, discussion. A programmer here from our IT with us today, we have Jackie Bellingit, okay. our Senior so again, Tester from Department of Testers. Speaker, we also uh, have Rachel Chico, and our programmer our, from IT Development. Uh, panel discussion, and last okay. but not the least, so guys, stay Stababa, in tune, our IT and we're going to go ahead and proceed with our panel from discussion. IT. Now, these right three ladies about... will have shit. Now. We'll be sharing their experiences in their current role and their advice on how they were able to achieve and develop their technical skills. So let's get to know them. Now for our first question, can you tell us about your current role? Uh, let's start with Jackie. How are you, Jackie? Hope you're doing good. Hi, Zed. Good afternoon. Um, I'm doing good so far. I hope you are as well. And at the same time, uh, with Charles and Rachel, I hope you're feeling fine. Um, my current role right now is I test um, the websites and a mobile application for Bell, Virgin, and Lucky. Um, we make sure that the apps and the websites are user-friendly for our clients so that we can...
right. Sorry about that. I believe I was on mute there for just a bit. But again, uh, I believe, uh, I hope everyone had fun with our little icebreaker earlier, right? So we're just going to go ahead and, you know, just wait here just for a few moments, okay? All right. So let's go ahead and, you know, reduce down some comments here. And uh, let's go ahead and start here with Facebook first before we proceed with the panel discussion, right? And yeah. So let me just go ahead and go to my uh, dashboard and let's go ahead and see. Maybe you guys want some shout out. I believe everyone wants one. I mean, I would if I was in a stream, but okay. All right. So we have a shout out for Ray Albert. <laughs> All right. So uh, yes, what type of shout out do you guys want? Well, uh, the floor is up to you. What do you guys want me to say? Maybe if you would like a uh, maybe a voice line from your favorite character. I don't know. <laughs> the, uh, the choice is yours, guys. Feel free. All right. So we have a request, a shout out for Miss Ransel. So we're just uh, going to go ahead and mention from the Department of Testers. How is everyone there? So, oh yeah, okay. all right. So thank you, everyone. Good day, everyone. For, uh, Welcome to our issue. panel so discussion. I believe Here we have our, with us today. We have Jackie Bellingit, our, our senior tester discussion. from Department of Testers. In we also have Rachel Chico, seconds. our programmer from so, IT development, and last but right? not the least, Cheryl Stababa, our so IT five, application five, specialist four, from IT. Three, now, these three ladies two, will have shared and will one. be sharing their experiences in their current role and their advice on how they were able to achieve and develop their technical skills. So let's get to know them. Now for our first question, can you tell us about your right, current role? So... Uh, let's start with Jackie. How are you, Jackie? Hope you're doing good. Hi, Zed. Good afternoon. Um, I'm doing good so far. I hope you are as well. And at the same time, uh, with Charles and Rachel, I hope you're feeling fine. Um, my current role right now is I test um, the website okay. and a mobile application for Bell, Virgin, and Lucky. Um, we so, make yeah. sure that the apps and the websites are user friendly for our clients so that we can simplify the processes that they cannot do through calling in to our center. So um, as, as the saying goes, we make it simpler for everybody. That's it. Thank All you. Right. Thank you very much, Jackie, for the wonderful answer. And uh, by the way, it's also nice to, you know, meet a colleague of mine and by the way, a senior of mine as well, because I'm also a tester. I've been in three months, but uh, when it comes to being user friendly, that is also one of my main objectives when also testing some websites and our application as well. Uh, again, thank you for the answer. And now we're going to go ahead and move on uh, to Miss Rachel. Uh, how are you today, Miss Rachel? And also, can you tell us about your current role? I'm doing good. Thank you for asking, Jack. And to answer your question, uh, I am a programmer from the core team. So previously, we have developed core, which stands for Quantrix Online Repository of Employees, which keeps all the data of the employees. And then eventually, we have migrated and upgraded this on a system or a platform, which we've all known as QNET. So currently, QNET is being utilized by different departments for updating all information and employees from application uh, to termination, um, uh, tracking payroll inputs, customizing reports, assigning policies and guidelines, clocking in, booking reservations, um, posting events and announcements, and so much more. And we are continuously developing some features to make the community even more connected in Quantrix by using QA. Understood. Thank you, Miss Rachel, for the wonderful answer. And by the way, it's nice to see a familiar face as well, because uh, I'm kind of also from the core team as well. And yeah, and I understand that uh, you guys are, I mean, we guys are actually working on QNET to make things more efficient and more user friendly to our different user in every single department. And I believe if you guys are watching this, most agents probably know the concept of clock and time card at the end of the day. So. I believe you guys can absolutely relate to this. So again, uh, thank you, uh, Miss Rachel, for the wonderful answer. And yeah, um, let's go ahead and uh, move on. Uh, Cheryl, uh, can you tell us about your current role? Uh, how are you today, by the way? I'm doing good. Thank you for asking, Jet. 
Um, my current role is I'm the IP application analyst here in Quantrix, wherein I usually do some admin tasks like um, or manage application. Like, for example, like the ticketing system, if you're familiar with that, and also this WebEx application, we are the ones who is giving licenses. And one of the examples as well are setting up the TVs in Pantrix. We also handle that. <laughs> That's it. Okay, nice. Thank you for the answers, uh, Ms. Charles. Thank you for the answer. Thank and yeah, uh, so thank you, ladies. So we're actually a bit curious here. Now, for our next question, you know, why did you consider to apply for a tech-related job? You know, let's start with Rachel. Well, uh, for me, because ever since I've always loved solving problems, solving puzzles. So that's how I felt every time I um, developed something and it worked. And plus, uh, technology nowadays uh, is really uh, evolving. So uh, that means um, a lot of new stuff can be learned as it evolves. Okay, now that's actually a very um, interesting and also a gripping answer. And I actually also like solving problems and stuff, but I kind of, um, you know, lose my focus every five seconds or so. But again, thank you. And I believe uh, everyone has, you know, a problem solving skills like that, but also want to take in a tech related job. Uh, thank you again, uh, Miss Rachel. Uh, now let's go ahead and, uh, you know, call for uh, Miss Charles. Um, any thoughts on this? You know, why did you consider? Uh, to apply for a tech-related job? Actually, I applied for this type of job because of my um, my working experience since... Actually, um, I finished accountancy but shifted to IT. <laughs> and I found it really interesting. That, interesting. That's why I pursue being in an IT-related course job. Oh, nice. Uh, Cheryl, that's a very uh, relatable answer. Just to be honest, I was also an education major as well from physical science. And now I'm also in this, you know, tech-related field. So uh, we're like, you know, comrades in arms. Thank you for the answer. And yeah, thank last... <laughs> thank you, Charles. And uh, yeah, let's move on to last but not least. Uh, what about uh, you, Jackie? Any thoughts on this? You know, why did you consider applying for a tech related job um i actually started as um, an agent um, in quantrix and uh, to be honest i have been in the industry taking in calls for almost 10 9 years already now when i joined q um racial insurance are already are, are already part of the it team um i find it interesting and i was curious um what else can i help or how else can I help the, uh, the company with, aside from taking in calls? So I took the opportunity um, and took the chance and was, was, um, was part of the IT team September 2017. So it was, it was a really, really nice and amazing journey. It is indeed a very amazing journey. Uh, thank you, Miss Jackie. And again, like I said earlier, re you really are my senior because actually I was also an agent uh, for at least about one to two years and spent one year for, you know, tech support. Again, thank you for the answer. And, you know, uh, you know, wow, what an amazing journey we have, like you ladies have went through. And that's actually very, you know, uh, intriguing and captivating as well. Now, moving on to uh, the next question. How long have you been in your current role? And you know, let's go first with uh, Ms. Charles. How long have you been with your current role, Charles? Um, I've been with this role for almost two years. Uh, four years, I'm sorry. Four years, because I started as an IT support as well with Jackie that time, and then got promoted or applied on this job. That's it. All right. Uh, thanks you for mentioning that to me, uh, Ms. Charles. Uh, it's been a while, four years. And yeah, uh, it's my you know, time is really relative, right? Uh, some four years is really a long time also coming from my perspective. I, again, thank you, Ms. Charles, for giving us the answer. 
And yeah, uh, let's move on uh, for. Um, let's go ahead and move on. Let's go. Uh, we, let's go ahead and call on Miss Jackie. Um, how long have you been in your current role, Miss Jackie? Um, I've been with the Department of Testers for two years, actually. Um, I was with the IT team before, and then when Department of Testers um, was initially starting, I was actually the IT support that um, helped them on 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 um, creating or birthing the department. So it's this this um this team is actually um one of the one of the amazing um parts of my stay in Quantrix because I was part of it when it was starting. So it was it, I was really grateful to be part of it and going three going three years um for our uh, for department of testers. Wow. Uh going three years, uh, just like in a relationship. We really have to you know give give keep track of what we are committing to ourselves, and especially if it's to our field, it's very um, gripping, and uh, what an exciting journey it has been, right? Again, thank you uh, for the wonderful answer. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the last but not least. Uh, Miss Rachel, um, any uh, thoughts on the matter? Uh, how long have you been in your current role? Yes, thanks, Jeanette. So I have been working as a programmer for two years now, uh, but um, I started up as an agent as well, uh, like Jackie, and um, after that, I was promoted into IT support together with uh, these two ladies, so, yeah. All right, thank you, uh, Miss Jackie, for the answer again. Uh, it seems like most of us here have been an agent in the past, so that's actually a very uh, a relief to hear. You know, we are, like I said with Miss Cheryl's comrades in arm, you know, We've been uh, through the same experiences in the past. So what an exciting journey it was, huh? And yeah, uh, you know, you ladies have mentioned that you have been working in the tech field, you know, for years, like two, four, given an average. And, uh, you know, for our next question, how did a tech-related job, you know, change your daily life? Let's start again with Miss Jackie. Uh, Miss Jackie, uh, your thought on this? Um. <laughs> to be honest, I don't. Uh, I, I I don't know what to answer because um, it has it has been um, it has been on our lives. Even if I wasn't working um, with IT or if it's not a tech related job, um, technology and IT itself is, has already been on our daily lives already. So um, I think. Um, I think more of me using different apps helped me a lot with my job um, since I am using different social media platforms, um, using different apps for, um, for let's say, Globe, Gcash, Paymaya, BDO. So you can actually relate on, on, on testing it on a, on a front end side so that you'll be able to apply it on your current role. So yeah, it technically changed everything on how you see um, apps for you or for everyone so yeah indeed it it, it did indeed it is uh, miss Jackie uh, actually uh, as a test as a tester you know um, using applications going to website uh, with that thought in mind uh, you actually are able to see it from a different perspective and yes I do understand for what you meant on you know when you were asked how did a it change your daily life because you know technology has already been incorporated in our daily uh, lives. Uh, so since birth, we were using our TV from high school, computer, and then the internet. And yeah, so I can totally relate to your answer, to your answer uh, Ms. Jackie. Thank you very much. And uh, let's go ahead and move on to Ms. Rachel. Uh, what are your thoughts, uh, Ms. Rachel? How did a tech-related job change your daily life? Well, for me, I think uh, most people ask me if I can repair a television or a washing machine. <laughs> I think that's uh, their expectation if you know tech stuff, so that everything you, you can plug in, you can repair, or you know how it works. But yeah, <laughs> no kidding aside, um, um, I've been more analytical and super keen to details whenever I encounter any problems, even though it's just a simple problem, you know, you kind of ask for more details to the 
Yeah, you know what? I can totally agree with what you mean by the general stereotypes. You know, repairing washing machine and all, as long as you are in IT, like most technologies, you should be familiar with it. Uh, my friend, actually, Mia as well, was actually uh, experienced that as well. So I just want to go and, you know, drop her name in here. Again, thank you for the answer. Very much appreciated. And yeah, let's go ahead and uh, go for, last but not least, uh, Ms. Charles. Uh, what's your thought on this? How did it change your actually, daily life? Actually, it really helped me every day. Like, I really learned lots of stuff when I started working as an IT. I learned how to fix some simple issues and they thought it's like a magic. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, I'm slash technician as well because sometimes we fix printer yeah. uh, is that right <laughs> yeah it's like you know um you know my my grandma or my grandparents uh when the internet goes down uh all i have to do you know was to bring it back up is actually reboot the modem and they see me like as some sort of a tech quiz i mean like dude i just kind of rebooted the modem i didn't do anything special to it so i, I really can actually relate to your answer as well. And uh, thank you very much, Ms. Charles. And yeah, uh, you know, you ladies uh, have mentioned that you have been in working in the tech field uh, for years now. So I'm gonna, my next question then uh, would be, you know, since uh, being in tech related job transform your daily lives. Now we're curious on what tools you ladies you use on a daily basis. So, what are those essential tools you use in your current role? So, let's start off with uh, Charles. Any thoughts in the matter? For my end, um, I don't have like specific tools mm -hmm. since I usually work on as an admin or just task as an admin. Um, usually, I use like a browser wherein you can access the website or a Third party um a third party application provided by our vendor. That's it. <laughs> well, so I can... no really specific app. <laughs> well, thank you for the answer, Mr. Ellis. Um, actually, um, yeah, uh, when I was an agent as well, there wasn't there was actually a lot of tools that I used. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. And now, uh, you know, thank you for sharing. Uh, since you're on the administrative level not that much tools but you need a browser you know to actually use them uh thank you for the answer once more and yeah let's go ahead and mention jackie any thoughts in the matter uh, miss jackie um, thank you uh right now what's more important is our 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 test devices we actually have test devices um, for iOS and Android uh, so that we can actually experience how the customers use it from an Android level and an o uh, iOS level. Aside from that, of course, uh, a browser, multiple browsers, um, Chrome, Firefox, and um, Edge. Um, but we, uh, as of the moment, we are actually um, endorsing or promoting um, customers to use the app. Uh, as far as I know, our agents and Quantrix are actually promoting self-serve. So that is what we are improving right now. And most of the time, um, that, is, that is what I use, uh, the Bell applications, uh, Bell Virgin and Lucky Mobile. That's All right. Nice. Uh, I really was intrigued by what you told me. Uh, you did mention to us uh, that you were a mobile application tester. Thank you very much. You know, I was very intrigued by the word test devices. Uh, I just got a thought in mind, you know, maybe I can go in and play with one of them. But again, that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> and thank you uh, very much uh, for the answer. And uh, what about uh, you, uh, Ms. Rachel? Uh, what essential tools uh, do you use in your current role at the moment? So at the moment, uh, for our main dev tool, uh, we use the Microsoft Visual Studio and MSSQL for the database. All right, nice. Google, <laughs> always. 
Yep, always, especially as a programmer. Uh, again, we're on the same team and most of us are programmer. I mean, not me. I'm just a tester, by the way. Just a quick disclaimer. And yeah, we use SQL for programming and, you know, basically uh, Visual Studio to basically uh, keep track of our items. So I can definitely re re relate to that. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Ms. Rachel, for the answer. So again, that was interesting and fascinating, especially with those test devices and all. Wish I can get my hands on them. You know, just saying. <laughs> now, moving on to our next question. Since we're all working, you know, in as a team, how did you share tech ideas, you know, with your teammates? Let's start off with Jackie. Uh, Miss Jackie, any thoughts on the matter? Um, we we share ideas through sessions. Uh, we actually do demonstrations to other um, new edition QAs or testers for uh, for Quantrix and for Bell. So what we do is we demo um, the app itself um, from a screen share so that we'll be able to provide them um, different understanding how the app works and how the website works. So we share it through a demonstration. Yeah. All right, that's very nice, sharing it for de a demonstration, you know, uh, especially when we're probably, you know, all working home from uh, home, uh, it's probably best, you know, to show it as a presentation on how it actually is. And, you know, I, I had the idea, you know, maybe you guys use those test device and all, but, you know, since you are working from home, most of us, I mean, it's probably, you know, more comfortable uh, to show presentation, which is also a very um, detailed way to show to the user on how to use their device. And you did mention that one of our, you know, main objective is self-serve. And thank you for mentioning that. And, and most people itself, you know, We'll probably use the apps, uh, maybe millennials and maybe Gen Z, probably just won't look at it. They know how, but for some user, they need a detailed explanation on how it works. Thank you uh, very much uh, for the wonderful answer. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Um, uh, Miss Rachel, um, how do you share tech ideas technique uh, with your team? So what's good with Core Team is that aside from the usual task of coding, we also have different subgroups like that you can join, such as database, support, testing, deployment, server, documentation, and research. So if um, you want or you have any ideas on um, implementing on something or any um, approach that we can implement, you can join the research team. All right, nice. And like I mentioned before, uh, by the way, um, Ms. Rachel here is one of my teammates as well. And I can definitely understand uh, on the di different subgroups that we have, you know, testing, I'm from testing. And yeah, if you want to go ahead and, you know, seek out more ideas and how to make any processes more efficient, more user friendly, we have a research. And again, thank you, Ms. Rachel, for the wonderful answer. Uh, it was very grouping and how we there's a lot of field and group that we are working together as one to bring uh, a better user experience uh, to our to our user in our website thanks and you know uh, let's go ahead and move on to Cheryl's uh, Miss Cheryl's um, how do you share tech or ideas technique with your teams actually on our team we handle different kind of specialization uh, so what we're doing is we're doing a documentation and share it on each one of the team, like our Office 365, and we have our NetSuite team and our IT support team. We have um, different specialization, each, <laughs> each one of us. So um, the only thing that helped us to know other stuff or other things is providing like a definite... Um, a clear knowledge articles, what we call to our end. All right, nice. Um, thank you very much, Miss uh, Shirley, for the answer. Um, when I was, you know, in high school as well, probably in college, uh, yeah. In order to get the stuff that you want to go and learn, of course, you have to go ahead and read some articles, especially for research. And I can I definitely understand it, and you know, relate to that as well. Uh, you know, the nostalgia and all. Uh, thanks. And, you know, most people also have this idea, you know, that IT professionals are all experts in computer parts, machinery, and most likely robots like AI, artificial intelligence. 
No, so what are the misconceptions about the tech industry? You know, that it's, that's not true. Now, let's start off again with uh, Ms. Shirtles. Any thoughts on the matter? I believe you uh, mentioned one before, right? Yeah, actually, um, my daughter thinks that when you take an IT course, you should be like very good in math subject. Is that true, guys? <laughs> <laughs> well, to, I can actually attest to that. I, I believe you don't really have to. Just the willingness to learn and the dedication is enough. I mean, that's from, from my side. Uh, what about you guys, uh, Miss Rachel and uh, Miss uh, Jaggy? Well, for me, uh, one misconception is that you need an IT degree to successfully get into the tech industry. Uh, because nowadays, I think most tech employers are looking for skills, not necessarily for a degree. And there are already a lot of uh, large groups of modern day uh, tech professionals that are taking boot camps, online classes uh, for just a short span of time and even joining some online tech groups to learn new skills. So. It does not matter if you have if you don't have an IT degree as long as you are willing to learn. Uh, that is something that we can all totally totally relate. Thank you very much uh, for your answer, uh, Miss uh, Rachel. Greatly appreciate that. And uh, let's go ahead and call it last uh, the not, but not the least, uh, Miss Jackie. What are your thoughts on this? You know, what are you know, misconceptions about the tech industry that isn't true? Um. I actually agree with uh, Shirley's and Rachel's, um, and I would like to add as well that you, you, you don't necessarily have to code or program if you want to work in an IT-related job. It's the, yes, um, it's part of it. However, there are other instances that you do not need to code or you do not need to program, just like what we are doing uh, for quality testing. Um, we just need to make sure we understand how it was implemented and what is expected so that we will be able to do our, our part um, in that tech-related job. So, All right, that sounds splendid. Um, thank you very much for the wonderful answer there, uh, Miss Jackie. Uh, again, I can definitely attest and agree with all the ladies here on what they just said. By the way, I'm in the uh, programming team but I don't know any programming language. And I also mainly focus on the front end, you know, basically t uh, testing the application to make sure it runs perfectly and to make sure that it's at least user friendly at the end. Again, thank you for all the answers. And you know what? <laughs> Again, it was hilarious at first. Uh, Again, yeah, general misconception like uh, being an ID, like you know, you need to know how to fix a washing machine, something like that. Again, dropping uh, Mia's name here. He was the one who suggested that and experienced that as well, by the way. So again, uh, by the way, there are some people, you know, in the audience who is most probably interested in switching or starting a tech-related career. Um, what is one piece of practical advice you would give to someone, you know, that's just starting out? Let's start with you, Miss Jackie. Any thoughts on this? For me, for anyone who's starting up, um, just just like what I did, um, I was annoyingly asking a lot of questions, especially for those um, for those uh, processes that I do not understand. Um, you don't you do not you do not have to be scared on asking questions. You always have to um, to ask questions, um, research, and um, always always try to do it on your own. Um, because learning it, learning it from your end and uh, making a mistake out of it, you'll be able to understand what to do next or how to how to get it right the next time you're going to do it again. So, yeah. That's yeah. Thank. Again, thank you very much for the answer. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, again, it's um, you know asking a question doesn't hurt, and you know we learn from our mistake. And when we're starting uh, to learn a skill, it's actually very. Um, normal for us to you know have a curve where we don't actually learn a lot of stuff so that's why we ask we fail but we learn and thank you again uh, very much for reminding us that and um, moving on uh, what about you uh, miss Jackie uh, uh, let's go I uh, sorry <laughs> what about you uh, miss Rachel any practical advice uh, you would give to someone starting out any thoughts on this miss Rachel 
for start uh, starting out of uh, people uh, just learn uh, in phases so first go through the basics like basic statements loops and commands and then um uh in the next phase start going into the details like range of data structures and don't stress if you are doing it slowly uh, because consistency that's what really matters nice uh, really do appreciate that consistency is what really matters thank you very much so uh let's go ahead and move on again last but not least uh miss charles any thoughts on the matter what is one piece of a practical advice would you give to someone you know starting out um for me just be curious and patient because the more curious you are the more lear- um the more you learn and then be patient because sometimes things won't fall on its places when you're doing some things like doing some testing <laughs> and then um there are like pros and cons and whatsoever just do your best yep just do your best again uh thank you very much for the answer uh just give it our all and do our best in the end uh, thank you very much and those were some inspiring uh, advices that we uh, ought to hear and apply of course in our daily lives and yeah um you know aside from having a tech background what are other personal values and characters should I develop, you know, to succeed in a tech industry? Uh, let's call on Rachel. Yeah, for me, um, it's being adaptable, not just in tech industry, but as a general. Because um, if um, you are more adaptable, uh, the more productive you will be overall. Like being adaptable, it's um, important because it showcases your ability to be resourceful. Uh, displays uh, your leadership skills and determination. So, yeah, being adaptable. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, being adaptable. And uh, let's go ahead and call on uh, Ms. Shirls. Uh, aside from having a background, what personal values and characters should I develop or uh, anyone should develop to, you know, succeed in a tech industry? Actually, um, for me, better if you will be, like, flexible since um since it don't focus on specific things we have like many branches that you need to cope to cope up with and the more you learn specific things or different branches the more you will find it like fun and really um self self-satisfaction feeling <laughs> when you yep. learn new stuff <laughs> uh, that we can totally relate uh, it's really you know satisfying uh, when you achieve a skill in the end and you know when you overcome a, sp- a specific challenge and learning that skill so I can totally totally relate thank you very much uh, Miss Charles uh, let's go ahead and move uh, go through Jackie uh, Miss Jackie uh, any thoughts in the matter um, for me, the the most uh, the most uh, sorry the most correct character that I would like to share is that you should be open to um, constructive uh, criticisms and all of the feedback that um, you will get from your coworkers, from your team leaders, from your director, um, and your partners. You should be able to uh, at least accept accept it and then um, redo it. And at the same time, be patient because if you take things, um, if you take things in in, in in a in a more quicker or faster way, it's not it's not going to be efficient and accurate. So take one step at a time. Thank you very much. Um, I greatly appreciate that. You know, uh, starting out as a uh, starting out in learning any skills, break it down to uh, bite-sized pieces or Take it one step at a time. Uh, thank you very much. All right. So uh, thank you again for this wonderful answers. I greatly do appreciate that. And, you know, uh, 10 years ago, most people wanted to become like an astronaut. Uh, but nowadays, they want to become, you know, uh, like app and I- app developers and IT specialists. Uh, so, you know, so for the last question, 
Uh, what would you be telling younger generation who would want to go into tech? So let's go ahead and start again with uh, Ms. Shirtles. Um, your Any thoughts on the matter, Ms. Uh, Shirtles? For me, um, I would advise that they need to be flexible since IT related courses has lots of branches, that, so many things to learn. So if you are flexible, you can easily learn those things and learn those things and easily adopt those information. Thank you That's very it. much. Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Charles. Greatly do appreciate that. Uh, be flexible and be adaptable. And uh, let's go ahead and, you know, call for Ms. Jackie. Any thoughts on the matter on what we need to tell the younger generation that, you know, want to go to tech, into tech, I mean? Um, for me, they, uh, they can actually explore um, different, um, as what have Charles uh, mentioned, uh, different varieties. There is a lot of different departments or different varieties when it comes to uh, technology. So they they can actually uh, find it um, on the on the web. Just Google it. Uh, be resourceful, um, and of course, take one step at a time. Um, you don't have to rush everything. Um, learn um, learn it slowly so that it will be efficient and accurate. And aside from that, have fun doing it. Yeah, so. I get I get what you mean. Thank you very much, there, uh, Miss Jackie. Uh, take it one step at a time, slowly but steadily, and also enjoy every step. Thank you very much. And uh, and yeah, uh, let's call on last but not least, uh, Miss uh, Rachel. Any thoughts on the matter? You know, what would you be telling the younger generation who would want to go into tech? Yeah. So, like Charles mentioned a while ago, uh, technology is really broad. So you gotta know what you really want, and then focus on your strength. And then after that, just practice, 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 because repetition, it's the key to success. And a lot of knowledge is useless if it's not being practically used. And I'm telling you, uh, being a tech savvy isn't hard. You just got to have the necessary momentum to get started. I can definitely agree. Again, um, thank you very much for the answer. Um, all you need is the momentum, and it'll keep you pushing you and pushing you to, you know, learn uh, new skills and even to new heights. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Miss Rachel. And you know what? Uh, thank you, uh, ladies. Uh, sorry, thank you, ladies, uh, for answering our inquiries and you know making this decision. Uh, sorry, uh, your decision for joining our discussion uh, meaningful for everyone. And I believe that concludes our panel discussion. And yeah, let's go back to our event. Uh, this concludes uh, this. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Charles, Rachel, and Ms. Jackie. Again, it's been an honor uh, speaking with you. Uh, lovely ladies, and hope we can, you know, do this again in the future sometimes. And again, hopefully I can get, you know, my hands in those, one of those test devices as well. No, just saying. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go back to our event. All right, now back at the main event, the floor is now open for your questions for our panel. Our speakers are now ready for your inquiries, just like what we have mentioned earlier during the first part of our program. And by the way, just a quick heads up to everyone, to those who actively participate in our Q&A segment, you will also have a chance to win a swag, aka prizes. So to the audience, uh, ask away down below in the comments for more chances, okay? So let's just go ahead and, you know, wait uh, for a first question to uh, pop up here in our dashboard, uh, just waiting here. 
So guys, uh, we are now go for the Q and A session. Uh, so uh, does anyone have any questions for these lovely ladies out here? Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and wait uh, from our leaderboards here or our boards. Okay, uh, questions are coming. Okay, so uh, first one came in. And are there any tips when learning something new, like how you did with yours? Really, this question wasn't uh, designated to our specifically to any of our speaker here. So um, I'm just gonna call on randomly if it's okay with these lovely ladies here. Uh, Miss Jackie, uh, would you like to go ahead and answer this question? Like, um, are there any tips when learning something new, like how you did with yours? For whenever you try to learn something new. Um, I, I really suggest to do research and um, apply it at the same time so that you'll be able to gauge how your learning abilities are. And as far as other platforms where you can see or check um, like how to's and whatnots, um, you can see um, you can see it from YouTube or from I, I highly suggest re do research and check for resources. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Miss Jackie, for the wonderful answer. Now, uh, whenever you try something to learn something new, um, it's always very necessary to do a research and apply it at the same time. Again, uh, thank you, uh, Miss Jackie, for the wonderful answer. All right, we have a question here from Facebook. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and read the question and maybe wait for a reaction, maybe. Okay, so from Facebook, can you recommend us some tools? Uh, you know, which is good to learn about today. So let me just go ahead and repeat uh, my question here. So can you recommend uh, some tools which is good to learn about today? All right, so I'm just waiting for a reaction from our speaker. Or maybe I'm gonna go ahead and call on uh, random again. So I believe Miss Jackie uh, already gave her thoughts on this. Yes. So <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and call uh, probably, oh, how about, how about this? I'm just going to call uh, to the person, you know, right beside Miss Jackie. Uh, Miss Rachel, uh, any thoughts on the uh, question here? Uh, can you recommend us some tools uh, to learn about today? Yeah, sure thing. When I was starting out, I uh, really used a lot of um, pro or watch a lot of uh, programming 101 YouTube. And also I visit this uh, website called W3 Schools dot com then from there i've learned a lot from the basics of uh, a lot of programming so it's a, a good thing it's a good start if you are if you want to be a programmer that's a really good website or learning tool to use all right thank you miss rachel for the wonderful answer so again when you're starting out uh she mentioned a website you guys can go to when you just want to go ahead and you know learn some programming which I believe, if memory serves me right, was w3schools.com. So if anyone is interested, I believe the website is always there. Thank you again uh, once more. Okay, so I do believe we have another question here, though, uh, from, hopefully I can say his name out loud, from uh, Kimi Paris. Now, the question is, how IT women make themselves relevant today? So again, how can IT women make themselves relevant today all right so i'm just waiting your reaction here from our speakers and all right so okay so i guess uh we know uh how this is going uh we already called on miss jackie uh miss rachel and that leaves just one more maybe charles uh sorry about this but uh, would you like to answer this question on how IT women can make themselves relevant today? Um, actually, uh, for IT women, all right, no worries. <laughs> all right, no worries, uh, Miss Cheryl. So if you would like, uh, we can uh, get back to you if it's okay. Uh, would that be all right, Miss Cheryl? Um, sorry, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, 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 we can hear you now. Sorry, you were just on mute. Sorry. So, yeah, take a stage, Miss Charles. All right, so. Okay. 
Okay. All right, so uh, Ms. Charles, I believe we are having a little bit of a connection issue, I, I guess. Uh, so uh, we're just going to go ahead and, you know, maybe get back to you. Uh, but uh, for now, there's, I believe, a new question here. Uh, what motivates you to keep going even though there are times it gets hard? So I believe we have a reaction here. Uh, Miss Jackie, uh, would you like to uh, share your thoughts on this? Um, well, technically, it's my family, <laughs> my kids, um, for that matter. Um, thinking about it, it's like a coffee commercial that um, what makes you wake up in the morning, right? So um, for me, what makes me go on and wake up every day are my kids. Um, as far as personal is concerned, I would love to give them the life they deserve. So, yeah. And since they're all girls, oh. so we empower women. So, from my behalf, so that's it. Okay, thank you very much. So, that's probably a nice family there. Actually, I do have a sister myself, and rest assured, I uh, probably know a thing or two about growing up uh, together with them. Uh, again, thank you for the uh, wonderful answer uh, that we have uh, there. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and maybe proceed on a next question here. So, I'm just kind of uh, waiting here for our dashboard for any additional questions. Like I mentioned, guys, earlier, uh, if you have any questions you guys want to ask, just comment down, and there will be a possibility, you know, maybe you can win some prizes or aka some swag. And rest assured, our team will coordinate it back to you. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and go back to our last question on what motivates you to keep going even though there are times it gets hard. Uh, so for this, I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, I believe Miss Jackie gave her thoughts on this one. Okay. Okay, so uh, before that, we're going to go ahead and go back to the uh, further questions in that, sorry. Uh, from Kimi Paris on how IT women can make themselves relevant today. Uh, Miss Cheryls, uh, can you hear us? Yes. Um, oh, nice. Take a stage. Yes, we can. Actually, um, I do, um, since there are like um this thing about women who's in IT world versus men in jobs but i believe um women also can make difference even in like um like chicks um she is a programmer she can do whatever guys or men can do <laughs> and also um even though in physical work um, women can also do those things. Understood. Thank you, Miss Charles, for the wonderful answer. So they can indeed make a difference, and all that they need to do is act. Uh, thank you very much for the wonderful response there. And yeah, we're just waiting here for a few more questions here in the dashboard, but since uh, it's still loading, uh, I believe, uh, we're going to go ahead and move uh, to our speaker, uh, Miss Rachel. Uh, maybe you have some thoughts on how IT women can make themselves relevant today, uh, if it's okay. Yeah, sure thing. So uh, I think um, um, with my co-panels in here, we are all from the IT team. We used to be IT specialists. So I think uh, the most um, fa a factor uh, that we could contribute is the balance in the tech industry. Like, um, um, I remember uh, with my co-IT specialist before, which is a guy, we always used to play the bad cop, good cop thing uh, in the operations just to solve some people on what to do. So I think it's um, the balance uh, in the tech industry. All right. Thank you, uh, Miss Rachel, for the uh, question there. So. Again, uh, they can indeed make a change in the industry, but mainly the contribution is in balancing it out. Uh, thank you so very much for the wonderful response there. Now, uh, we're moving on. We're just going to go ahead and, you know, um, uh, check out for four more, uh, a few more questions here. So, guys, just shut down, uh, down the comment. Okay, so nice. We have a uh, question uh, that is directed to every one of our speakers here. So um, maybe I can get a reaction here. So again, the question is, what do you consider as your biggest success in your role? 
So that's just random. So uh, I'm just going to put it out there uh, to our speaker. Uh, does anyone want to go ahead and, you know, maybe answer it? Okay, got it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry about this, but thank you. I believe we got a response. Uh, Miss Rachel, uh, I believe she wants to answer that. Uh, take the stage. Yeah, uh, for me, what do I consider my biggest success in my current role? I think it's um, fulfillment. For me, it's uh, fulfillment in my current role, which is a programmer. Because um, uh, Um, being a program recording gave me a chance to reach out to the community on helping them to get vaccinated by creating a vaccine prior registration feature in unit. And uh, it's interesting because you became a part of the solution for a problem or concern which you became um, um, or uh, most employees are dealing with. So once you know that you are able to help them, it But also, I would like to use this opportunity to say thank you to Quantrix for uh, providing us a vaccine for COVID and not just for us, but for also our loved ones. So uh, thank you for keeping the community COVID-19 free. All right. Nice. Uh, thank you, uh, Miss Rachel, for the wonderful answer. And um, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I think uh, our connection here got interrupted there for a moment, but no worries. We got your message for the questions, uh, which was that the biggest fulfillment uh, i mean sorry that your biggest success in your current role is mainly the fulfillment that you currently have and of course when you are helping fit people uh, that actually uh, brightens uh, the day right again uh, also again shout out to quantrix for you know providing us as well you know for the vaccine for our loved ones and to ourselves as well so yeah uh, let's go ahead and uh, move on to another question if it's okay I'm just kind of waiting here in the uh, dashboard. Um, if not, uh, we're going to go ahead and, you know, uh, go circle back to the same question. Maybe a different speaker want to give out the uh, same thoughts. Oh, yeah. So we have one here from Ms. Charles. Yeah, I believe she, uh, Ms. Charles, uh, you can take the stage. I believe you want to answer the question on um, how we would overcome a difficult task that was given to you. Uh, is that correct? Uh, Miss Charles. Yes, correct. All right, nice. Uh, you take the stage, Miss Charles. Uh, this one's on you. Actually, um, good thing is whenever we encounter any difficult difficult task, or a really, or a task that is really new to us, like we don't have any idea. Um, I have a, like teammates that we can share or share our like brainstorming things on how to fix this or how to do this and what are the next steps that need to do. So that is really a um, good thing in Quantrix. We are really um, collaborative. Okay, nice. Thank you so very much for the wonderful answer as well. And again, I can relate to that because again, the question was on how we can overcome difficult tasks that was given to you. And Ms. Charles indicated that it all uh, boils down to collaboration uh, with your teammates. And again, I was new to uh, uh, the core team as well, and they showed me the ropes. So I can definitely relate to that answer as well. So again, uh, thank you everyone uh, for you know uh, participating in our Q&A segment. And like what I mentioned before earlier, uh, what will happen here is that our uh, though to those who actively participated in the Q&A segment, rest assured, potential swags or prizes um, it will be possible again, and it will be announced at the later part of our event, okay? So again, uh, yeah, uh, we're going to move on to our next uh, segment. But again, uh, thank you to the audience for asking those interesting inquiries and also to our speakers for those inspiring advices. Uh, moving on, uh, we're going to go ahead and, you know, talk about uh, the different career opportunities that we have here at Quantrix. So in reference to the, uh, uh, the career opportunities, so here in Quantrix, opportunities in IT are endless. If you know anyone who's interested with the roles, uh, cue the slide, I refer to your friends, colleagues for our technical hiring post. Now, if you have your CVs or resume ready, send it right over to recruitment at Quantrix.com. 
Again, it's recruitment at Quantrix.com and learn about the different open IT opportunities by visiting our website, Quantrix.com to know more information. And again, we invite you to be a part of our amazing community. Okay. So thank you very much. So yes, if you want to go ahead and take a screenshot of the different uh, positions is there, just going to go ahead and you know, maybe post it up for a few more seconds. Uh, we have a front end when, uh, web developer, sorry, down to a senior BI operations specialist. So again, um, if you have your CVs or resumes ready, send it right over to recruitment at Quantrix.com and you can visit Quantrix.com to know more information. I believe I, I didn't say that correctly. So sorry, let me just repeat myself again. If you have your CVs ready, send it over to recruitment at Quantrix.com and Quantrix.com if you want to go ahead and, you know, the website to know more information, okay? All right. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and go on to the next segment here. Like uh, what I mentioned earlier, we're going to go ahead and, you know, uh, mention the winners. Okay. So again, rest assured for our winners for the icebreaker event and to our participant in the Q&A session, our team will contact you for the swag as we have designated members for our team just for that occasion. And now uh, let's go ahead and see our winners here for the Q&A session and for the icebreaker. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the swag. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and uh, shout their names out loud. So congratulations for the game winners. So to Mr. Aaron James Maka Kalad, hopefully I said that name correctly. So to the guy who uh, got the red, what was it again to the red panda? Again, the question also eluded me for some reason. I mean, Firefox, right? The browser. And next we have also Aaron Cloyd Sazon. Uh, next to that is Mark Tumaneng. And also we have last but not the least, we have our last winner for the icebreaker. We have Mr. Ray Albert Anyog. So again, uh, keep your lines open, guys. Uh, as our member from our team will contact you in reference for those swags and prizes, okay? And now for our Q and A segment winners, uh, I'm just going to say their name. We have Kimi Perez, thank you very much for participating. And we also have Ira Ligsai. So again, guys, thank you everyone for joining in. And again, keep your lines open. Our team will contact you for the swags, okay? And that is guaranteed, of course. All right. So again, uh, the day has been so overwhelming with tips and advices and more. But we still have more advices from this lady. So let's go ahead and play the video, shall we? Hi, my name is Beverly. I'm under BCE Support POD, Department of Developers. I started working in Matrix last April 2021. Hi, I am Lei from the Department of Developers, and I'm part of the mobile team. I've been with Quantrix for more than two years now. 